Right, number one then. So we've got phi is some function of two variables, x and y, given by this x squared, y squared over r cubed. But r isn't an independent variable, no. r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, that usual ray formula. And yet to show this, you've got x times its partial derivative, y times its partial derivative equals the original function, phi. Right, well first of all, get partial phi by x. Right, now you could do that as a product, but I'll put it together. I'll just do it as a quotient, so that'll be r to the 6. Right, so the top 2x times y squared, because it's only x that's the variable here, times r cubed, minus leave the top alone, and then differentiate r cubed. So it'll be 3r squared times the derivative of r. Well, r squared is x squared, y squared. So 2r times the derivative of r respect to x would be 2x. So partial r by x will be x over r. And since that expression is symmetrical, partial r by y would be y over r. Right, pop that back in then. So that's x over r. Right, how can you tidy that lot up? Well, you can take out an x, and you can take out a y squared, and you can take out an r over the r to the 6, when that get cancelled. Then I'm left with a 2 and an r squared, and I'm left with an x, there it is, an x squared, and that 3 as well. And that 3 as well. Well, maybe we'll cancel that down now. So that's x, y squared over r to the 5 times the bracket. 2 r squared minus 3 x squared. Right, that's the first bit done. Right, so same again then for partial phi by y. But this expression here is completely symmetrical in x and y. So it's just a case of doing the same thing again, only replacing the y's and x's. So it'll be 2 r squared minus 3 y squared with only significant difference. There, there's both partial derivatives. So it's just a case of feeding it back in there. So it'll be x times that first one and y times that second one. And when x times partial phi by x plus y times partial phi by y to be equal to what? Well, x times the first one, we'll just make that into an x squared, y squared over r to the 5 times 2r squared minus 3x squared. And that'll be y squared, x squared over r to the 5 times 2r squared with a minus 3, y squared. Right, there's a whole bunch of stuff there they've got in common. They've both got x squared, y squared over r to the 5. And then that first one's got 2r squared. And the second one's also got another 2r squared to add on to it. Minus 3 times x squared minus 3 times y squared. Right, so it's x squared, y squared over 3r to the 5 times. Now that's 4 lots of r squared minus 3's in common, x squared plus y squared. But r squared was x squared plus y squared. So that's 3 lots of x squared, 3 lots of r squared there. So times 4r squared minus 3r squared, which is 1. So it's just times 1 lot of r squared. So you've got x squared, y squared over r cubed, which is the original function, phi. There, that's question 1, part 1 done. Right, so question two, I want the direction derivative of this function f, which is x sin y z, at the point one, three, zero, in the direction of a vector, one, two, negative one. Right, now, what that means is, at that point there, at the point one, three, zero, you want the directional derivative of f, whichever way it happens to go, that'll be the grad of f, the resultant of the three perpendicular partial derivatives, but the amount of it that goes in the direction of that second vector, which you could just call u, which means you want its projection onto that vector, or in particular, I want the magnitude which is projected in that direction. I want the length of this part here in this little right angle triangle. Well, if you call that theta, the part you actually want would be this part, which would be the length of grad f, its magnitude, times cos theta. Well, grad f dot u means the length times the length cos theta. So that just means I've got grad f dot u. But I don't want the length of u in it, so divide out by the length of u by the magnitude of u. Well, that's the same as saying I've got grad f dot some unit vector. u divided by its own length will leave a unit vector, which you could call n. So n is going to be u over the length of u which means I want two parts to get this projection, then I'll want grad f, and I'll want n. Right, so grad f, first of all, that means I want to do the partial derivative in three different directions. 
Right, so what have you got for the first bit? Well, that's just a single x, that's just going to be a one time. So it's all just be sine y, z. That's a single function as well. That'll just be x cos y, z times the root derivative, which would just be z. And same again for the other one, y, z only this time, times y. Right, now, you could either do that dot in and then put the numbers in, or you could put the number in first and then do it dot n. So I'll do that. So putting the numbers in, putting in 1, 3, 0. I'm going to have sine, and that's going to be 3 times 0. 1 times cos, and that's going to be 3 times 0, times 0. And that's going to be 1 times cos, 3 times 0, times a 3. Well, that's just going to be 0. That's going to be 0. And 1 times 3, that's going to give me a 3. So there's the first bit. Right, so that's the components of grad f then at the point 1, 3, 0. Now you still need the components of the unit vector, so n. So that's just going to be 1, 2, negative 1 divided by its length, 1 plus 4 plus 1. So that'll be 1 over the square root of 6 times 1, 2, negative 1. All right, so that's that part there. So all that's left now is to answer the question, what is the directional derivative in the direction of the vector u? Words, what's the rate of change of f in the direction of u? What's partial f by partial n, the unit vector? Well, that'd be grad f at the point 1, 3, 0, dot the unit vector. Well, just feeding all those numbers in very quickly. Well, let's get the products. I'll be 1 upon root 6 times 0 plus 0, take away 3. So it's negative 1 upon root 6 times 3. So you can rationalise the denominator. So 3 times root 6 over 6, negative of that, negative a half, root 6. <coughs> or if you will, you could put that 3 back up to 9 and put it into the square root bracket with the 6 and make that 3 upon 2. So you can have negative square root of 3 upon 2, if you wished. But I prefer that one. Okay, so part 3 then. So we have z, which is a function of two variables, x and y, given by x squared plus y squared times sine of x over y. I need to show that, this usual thing, x partial by x plus y partial by y gives you 2z in this case. Right, so first of all, it's going to be get that partial z by x. Well, what you've got here is a product. So first part will just be 2x, leave the other part alone, sine x over y, plus leave the first part alone then, so the bracket x squared plus y squared, sine will go to cos of the thing it's operating on times the derivative of the thing, since it's x, will just be 1 over y. So what's that tidy up? 2x sine x over y plus 1 over y times x squared plus y squared cos x over y. Right, that's partial z by x done. Now, partial <coughs> z by y, well, it's sort of symmetrical. So we'll start off similarly, 2y sine x over y plus leaving the bracket x squared plus y squared cos x over y. But this time the derivative of the inside is going to be, leave that x like a constant, and that would have to be negative 1 over y squared. Right, tidy that up. So it'll be 2y sine x over y minus x over y squared, bracket x squared plus y squared cos x over y. Right, there's the two parts. Now, so I want these two parts together there. So I want x partial z by x and y partial z by y. So it'll be x times that, so it'll be 2x squared sine x over y plus x over y bracket x squared plus y squared cos x over y plus now y times this one, so 2y squared sine x over y minus, now one of the y's will cancel, you will leave an x over y bracket x squared plus y squared, cos x over y. Now that middle one and the end one will cancel out, just leaving these two first and third. So 2x squared sine x over y plus 2y squared sine x over y. So two's in common, the brackets in common, so you've got two lots of x squared plus y squared of sine x over y. But that's what you had to begin with. That's what z was. So you've got two lots of z. There's the first bit. Right, now for the last part, I've got that expression already, and what I've got to do is show this. I've got to show that x squared times the second derivative with respect to x, plus 2xy times the second derivative mixed with respect to xy, plus y squared times the second derivative with respect to y, is the same expression, 2z. <coughs> so first of all, 
Eh, what's partial by partial x of all three parts? Well, there, that's a product. So I'll be 1 times, leave that derivative alone, plus x times, and then the second derivative with respect to x. Plus, that's just like a constant y, so I'll be the second derivative mixed, partial x, partial y, and that'll be 2 partial z by x. Now, do the same again with respect to y. So that means that that's just like a constant, so it'll be x times the second derivative mixed, but I'll just write partial x, partial y, it's the same both ways round, plus, and that's going to be product again, 1, leave the derivative alone, plus y times the second partial derivative with respect to y equals 2 times the partial of z by y. Right, now, so I'll call that 1, I'll call that 2 because I've got to generate this expression on the top here. I want an x squared. Well, multiplying that by x would generate an x squared of that second derivative. So I'll have 1 multiplied by x. And to get that y squared with that second derivative, the second times y. Right, this will take up a bit of space. So I'll start way over here. So it's x times the first one. So I'll be x times the partial by x, and that'll become x squared times that second derivative, plus xy times the second mixed derivative will equal, oh, on the other side, because there's more to go in yet, 2x times the partial by x. Now, it's y times the second equation. So it's going to be xy times that mixed second derivative by x by y, plus y times partial by just y, and then the y squared times the second derivative with respect to y. On the other side, it'll be plus 2y partial z by y. Now, what happens there? A lot of this will go together. So we've got, we've got the x squared term there. So there's the x squared times the second derivative with respect to x. And there's two lots of the xy for the mixed derivatives, which is what we wanted. And there's the y squared for the second derivative with respect to y. Now, there's a single derivative to go over and join that one. There was two on that side. You're going to take away one of them as far as the partial by x is concerned. And then the partial by y is there was 2y on that side, but take away 1 from the other side. So that means I've now just got a single x partial z by x and a single y partial z by y. But that's just what we had to begin with. That was just 2z. So there it's done.